Michael Knight here on the radio, News Radio 560 KPQ, and my special guest is on the line with us. Let's get him on the air right now. He's the CEO of iFiber One. Kelly Ryan is with me. Kelly, you there? I am. Excellent. Thanks for being with Michael. Thanks for being with us today, and good afternoon to you, Kelly. Well, let's start with the basics, okay? If someone hears the phrase iFiber One, what are they talking about? Well, that would be the news and sports division of iFiber Communications. The uh, core company, of course, is our full telecommunications, triple play, um, open access, which is what we are, a service provider in the open access arena. So when you see iFiber One, that's our news and sports company that we formed uh, that is 100% owned by iFiber Communications itself. Now, the business of news, once you start, you just can't shut it down. It starts and yeah. it never stops. I mean, the, the, the old phrase is. that the news watch never stops is, is not very funny to the people in the news business because they know it never stops. And, of course, they know it. something right. always breaks when you're away or you're eating watermelon with your family or, you, or it's midnight <laughs> and you want to go to bed. Something always happens to, to snap you back to your number one yeah. job, which is to chase the story. And how do you like that business as a business model? It's a tough one, and uh, we've got some outstanding people that uh, we've brought on board that are very used to the craziness of a news cycle, and that's true. Uh, we, you know, when uh, one of the things that when we started this division, you know, we wanted to kind of change how uh, at that point, and we're from, of course, originally from, you know, more of Grant County, uh, more south of Wenatchee originally, and, you know, down there you had the newspaper and then really what was read from the newspaper. So, you know, the local news was always just a wee bit behind. And so the other part of it was for us as a corporation, being in the business of open access with public utilities, we thought it was important. A large part uh, of the time, it seemed that, you know, over the last 20 years of doing this, that sometimes the reporters got it, sometimes not. And it's not really their fault. You know, dealing with the public utility and everything goes along with it can be very complicated. So we thought, you know, it's time. My background was television production that we said, Let's let's start a news division. Let's let's you know. But we're going to approach it a certain way, which means the news has got to be fresh. It's got to be as it's happening. It's got to be as it's evolving. And the other part about it is this, Michael. I one of the things that seemed like to me is every time I turn around, if there was some horrible event, somebody gang related or you know some drug bust, you know that's when you'd see Seattle pick up the news or you'd see Spokane. You know they pick it up. And the old saying in the business, as you know, but bleeds it leads. It does indeed. I hate that I hate that saying, and I. Here's the fact that everything that was ever being reported about Central Washington was only the negative stuff. So one of the things that, I, that when we built the company, into, you know, at first it was a division. Now, of course, it's a standalone corporation, but well, um, LLC. But you know, when we did it, I said, I don't, I know it's fine. I know that that's important. I know we got to report stuff as it happens. But I also want to mix in good stories. There's a lot of really good things happening out here in Central Washington. New businesses coming in, create, you know, creation of of economic you know, diversity, jobs, you know, living wage jobs. And, you know, there's, and there's heroes out there, and there's people that do something so incredible every single day and contribute to our society and contribute to our community that, I, I, you know, the, my deal was this. You can report on it, but I want, I want stories about the other side as well. I want to, you know, I want to find those people. I want to, you know, I, I want to do a full three-minute breakdown on who they are and what they do. So we've evolved a lot or, or, you know, since we launched i One. It's gotten you know, exploded. We're now... Not only in central, we just in fact moved into central, north central there in Wenatchee, but we started in central Grant County. We expanded then into the west side. We launched over in Shelton. Actually, we acquired KMES radio station, uh, and now that's I five one news radio. And then you know, with, with the launch here, beginning of the year, uh, with our launch there in in Wenatchee, you know, into Chelan County, we're expanding it. But you know, right now it's it's more tailored towards what. You know the demands are. Yeah, and when actually it's got pretty good news coverage. So our news coverage will be a little more specialized, and some of the stuff maybe that everybody else isn't covering. Versus like in Grant, you know, we do a full wide you know news coverage in Shelton or there in Mason County. You know the same thing, and we you know we're right there next to Olympia, so we pick up a lot of the you know the political events as well. But anyway, that's a little bit about I Fiber One, Michael. And also, you probably noticed that the media outlets for the central part of our state are somewhat lacking compared to Spokane on one end of the state and Seattle on the other end, and not much in between where a lot of news happens. Hey, a lot of news, a lot of very exciting things. And you're absolutely right, Michael. And again, with I Fiber One, you know, we're able to report that information, and it's been picked up. We've had multiple stories picked up, even at the national level. Uh, we had one story here just a while back uh, concerning, of course, the, the shooting. Uh, and this young lady was in Moses, and she 
just got up. She started speaking. We happened to have a camera uh, operator there and, and a reporter. We recorded it, posted the story, and it went viral. I mean, I think I, I something close to a million views. <laughs> Crazy. I remember that. And that was a high school student talking it about was. right after the shooting in Florida. Exactly right. And uh, we had, in fact, on the heels of that, then we did another interview with her just to kind of see what is that like? You know, when you have, you, you go out and, and you know, that, that spark happens and, and it catches fire. And, you know, you know, what is the, you know, what made you do that? What were you thinking about? But beyond that, we've had, you know, multiple stories that have been picked up, like I say, in the national scene. And because we do most of our stories in, as video versus still and, and just written, you know, that, that means then that our partners, you know, from the Spokane News to the Seattle News, they as well use us as a resource for uh, their either B stock or sometimes they've even carried our stories. Building a new audience today is, is not easy because a lot of people have dependent places that they go. Instead of going to iFiber One or to KPQ, they may be on Facebook right now, and there's no way to get right. them back unless I go on Facebook and tell them that I'm doing something that they should be <laughs> listening to, right? So uh, what, what, do you, what do you do to, to talk about to talk to a new audience and to get them to come to you? I, I, at the end of the day, we just yield to Michael. <laughs> 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 you know, there's no secret sauce, I don't think. You know, we we post stories. I know some folks kind of do teasers. That really irritates. You know, these folks, the, the younger audience, they want their stories. They you know they want to go. They want to find them at the social media. You know, the social sites that they're hanging at. So if it's Facebook or it's Twitter, we post the full stories on both. You know, at the end, we try to brand a little bit during the. You know, and our old goal at the end of the day is really. You know, it's about serving the public. So as long as we are fulfilling that mission, then we're happy. So if that means they want to get the stories on Facebook, we'll post it on Facebook. They want them on Twitter or both, or then they want to come to iFiber One as well. Any one of those sites we are, um, you know, we, we post because, again, this is a service that iFiber Communications is bringing into the community. This is our way uh, of, you know, of bringing, uh, you know, a, a way that we can, you know, earn the respect and, and the trust of that community you know, as, as we're launching and, you know, as we are there to, to serve. It's funny how we are in the news business where some, some stories you just set aside because they're too gruesome or you set aside because maybe they're not newsworthy enough. It's about a person. It's about an event. It's about a festival. It's about something that's happening in the community that in certain news cycles is considered to be fluff. It's not considered uh, necessary or, or, or important content. And that's where I sort of disagree with news decisions sometimes based on the fact that those events happening around town really are talking about the, the, the very fabric of your community and the people that aren't necessarily in the news because they've been arrested, but because they're doing something worthwhile. I totally concur with that, Michael. And I'm not sure if I can really add much more to what you just said. I, I wholeheartedly believe the same thing. It's a large part of why, to me, I like to sing about a five-to-one ratio that, look, if you're going to you know, produce five of those stories that are of the lead and lead section – I want a good story. I, I want a story on, on somebody that's doing something that's that's awesome. And there's so much of that out there. And that could be from a high school student to, you know, to somebody that, that's out there, you know, going up and down the street, you know, putting flags. You know, we, we many of those stories we've covered, and these young to, you know, just our local community, there are so many heroes out there, so many folks that do so, so much amazing things, but they're not picked up. You're exactly right. you got to, you know, the reporters are out there. You know, they're, they're being driven by the news directors. Let's get the numbers. You know, it's always about the numbers. For us, because it serves our community and because I fiber once, you know, it's really built a little fundamentally different, we can take a little more time. We can learn a little more about, you know, who that person is and tell their story.